So the next question is, when I got to Japan, did someone help me to get settled in? Uh, the answer is no. <laughs> no. For today's video, I thought I'd answer the most frequently asked questions for those of you who are interested in coming to Japan as a Japanese language school student, so please keep on watching. So the first question is, where did you stay while you were studying? So I studied Japanese language school in Tokyo. Before I arrived, I was actually already messaging with a share house company, and I think share houses are a very inexpensive way to get housing in Japan because if you want to rent an apartment, there's a lot of money to be paid, and considering that your status is a student, they might not be so inclined to rent out to you because as a foreigner and as a student, you can just get up and leave at any time without having to pay the rent and there's always that risk. So for me, I thought that the share house would be the best way for me to spend my time in Japan. With share houses, most of the things are already paid for. It's already included in the rent. So your room, the electricity, the gas, the internet, it's already provided for you and you just need to pay a certain amount. So for me, I actually have a video on that. You can see it up here. I had a share house in Nishiwaseda by Create Guest House. I think I paid around 63,000 yen per month. The amenities were very well maintained. There was a cleaner that came once a week. So I didn't have to worry about cleaning the common areas. I just had to worry about keeping my room clean. Did Jellyfish arrange the accommodation for you? Okay, so Jellyfish at the time, I'm not sure if it's still true, but Jellyfish, the educational agency I used to come to Japan, they did offer accommodation, but just on a personal preference, I just wanted to have my own accommodation for the very beginning. From what I remember, I think Jellyfish only gave you accommodation up to three months and then after that you were on your own. Please fact check me on that because I'm not entirely sure but at the time I remember there was a time limit to how long you could stay at the dormitory. But I actually have a friend, she didn't use Jellyfish, she's American and she used a different agency and she didn't like her language school's dorms. She said that they weren't very well maintained and while I don't know anything about the Jellyfish condition, it would still be a good idea to find a share house on your own, find accommodation on your own. If you're into renting an apartment, there are so many agencies that kind of help foreigners. If you're into looking for a share house, I'd highly recommend Create Guest House. It's not sponsored by the way, it's just they were really nice and very patient with me because it was my first time living in Japan and I had no idea what to expect. But they guided me through the whole process so it made things very easy. Did you already have a part-time job before you flew to Japan? The answer is no. Uh, I actually applied for a part-time job once I got to Japan. You do need special permission to work and you need to fix that before you arrive to Japan. That way it's faster. So after I got my COE, I did print out this form. Uh, I will link it in the description box below. It's like permission to engage in other activities and they stamp it on the back of your residence card as you go through immigration. And that stamp lets the employer know that you can actually work part-time. Without that stamp or without that yeah, seal, you won't be able to work part-time. So please be careful about that. And if you want to do it while you're in Japan already, I think you just need to go to the immigration office. But given the times we live in, much better to do it as you enter Japan. Next. So the total estimate of my application process, I'm so sorry, but I don't remember. At least 600,000 pesos. My tuition fee was about 300,000. And there are a lot of miscellaneous fees when you move. You have to pay for the airfare. You have to prepare money as you move to Japan because for sure you won't be able to find a job right away. So it's always good to have some stash hidden somewhere and as well as a few months of rent because I think when I first moved to Japan I didn't even know how to cook honestly so I would eat convenience store food or I would just skip meals just bring as much as you can and then some <laughs> if I got to choose my school and city as well as a program or level of Japanese language to learn okay so with jellyfish I was able to choose the school that I wanted to go to they gave me a roster and luckily one of them was UJS I really enjoyed the field trips and just the program in general which relates to if I was able to choose a level of Japanese no I wasn't able to do that so basically I think it differs per school they had everyone take a diagnostic exam and based off diag that diagnostic exam they sort you into a class but you all start from the bottom and honestly I think that's a really really good technique to start everybody from the bottom when they come to Japan as a Japanese language school student because that means they can fill any gaps that you might have missed when you were studying Japanese by yourself or in your home country. Did I have a sponsor when I applied? Yes, I did have a sponsor when I applied. My sponsor was my mom. When I got to Japan, did someone help me to get settled in? Uh, the answer is no. <laughs> Nobody helped me. To be fair to Jellyfish though, they did have a seminar before we left. They told us what we needed to bring. They told us we needed to go to City Hall. 
school, register our address, sign up for health insurance, get a bank account, get a cell phone account. They were pretty thorough in their seminar, so I didn't really feel like I was lacking anything. But just to be safe, I, th I did more research by myself. And yeah, when I came to Japan, I was all alone. The jellyfish gave me an option to extend your st my studies after I finished it. I think that would depend on the course. So I took a one-year course. Other people took a two-year course as well. So it really depends on what course you want to sign up with. So some people come to Japan, they go to language school for one or two years. And after that, they go to a vocational school where they learn other skills like IT or caregiving or art, design, it really depends on you. As for extending studies though, I'm not entirely sure about that. I don't have any experience. So what process did your employer have to go through so you could get a working visa? Okay, so well, they had to show a lot of documents on their end that they could sponsor me, that I would be a full-time employee, all of these things. I did have to take a certificate to show that I could teach English. So there are many online. You take like ESL, TESOL, um, you just sign up for the course. It's around 100 hours, you take it. And then at the end of that, and and I needed to give that as proof. I needed to give my JLPT and for at the time as proof. I needed to give my diploma, birth certificate, passport. I think for the most part, that was all I had to give on my end. Most of the work is on their end. If you really want to work in Japan, make sure that your employer coordinate with Polo Tokyo and the POEA because otherwise you're just stuck here. And that's a sad reality of being a direct hire. So those are all the questions that I got from ZMA Tamayo. Thank you so much for asking those questions and I hope that it helped you guys as well watching this at home. Yeah, if you have any more video requests, please do let me know. Follow me on Instagram and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!